The Federal Reserve is fighting the U.S. government? <laughs> well, who's going to win? Well, many people think the Federal Reserve is part of the government. So hearing that they're now fighting the U.S. government and the U.S. Treasury might not make any sense. But the banks, while of course authorized by Congress, they maintain their independence. And we are seeing this on full display right now. And there's many factions around the world fighting over the control over money. Of course, control the money, control the world. So everybody wants to control nations, central banks, and yes, even these institutions inside the United States. So in this video, I'm going to break down what battle between the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government is about. How Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen are at odds wanting opposite things and different goals. We're going to look at what's driving this fight, who I think will win the battle, and how you and I can navigate this fight with our investment and our retirement accounts, and what I'm doing with my own money. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss, and I make these videos to change the way you think about money because these things are difficult, they're complex, but we can break them down very easy to understand. Today, we're gonna to talk about the battle over money. It's always a battle. We got politicians, they want more money to buy more votes. We got the Federal Reserve trying to fight against the Treasury. And of course, all of that is working against what we want to do with our own money. So we're gonna break all this down. Now, I do wanna say just real quick before we jump into this, um, I've been talking about these subjects for several months. I'm gonna show you some of these clips that I've had. Um, and so it's kind of like this evolving work that we're doing and we have to be nimble. We have to tactically manage our own portfolios. And so um, the, I made a video talking about how the Fed is gonna pivot because of the change CPI caused a lot of commotion. I got flooded with comments and questions like, what do you mean, Mark? You're changing your position. What are you doing? So I wanna have a one hour presentation. I'm gonna invite you to it. We're gonna go through all of the data so I can show you exactly what I'm seeing and more specifically, show you what I'm doing with my own money. And I wanna answer all your questions because I know that sparked a ton of questions. So there's a link down below if you wanna come join me, it's free, come hang out. We'll go through all these charts and I'll do all your question and answer live. So don't miss it, there's a link down below. But let's talk about this right now, the battle over money. Of course, it's always a battle over money because everybody wants to control it, control the money, control the world. Now, in the cryptocurrency space, as a, as a Bitcoin guy, someone who's been around crypto for a long time, the one objection I always hear is the governments will never allow something like cryptocurrency to exist. They don't want competition, which is a very valid argument. And it's, it's, it's a good argument to have. But which governments? Which governments won't allow it? See, that's the question. So are you talking about the Federal Reserve? Are you talking about the European Central Bank? Are you talking about People's Bank of China? Are you talking about the Bank of Japan? Oh, that's supposed to be BOJ, not J-O-B, but you know what I mean. Uh, we have all these different countries, all these governments, all these central banks. We have the IMF, we have the BIS. So who's not gonna give up control over money? You see? That is what we're talking about. And so really we're gonna talk about in the United States, of course the dollar is the reserve currency of the world, the dollar. That means the US reigns supreme, the Federal Reserve reigns supreme over everybody else. And so within the, the, the king of the hill, within the, top dog, within the top dog, we have the Federal Reserve and they take care of monetary policy. But then we have the government, the US Treasury, which handles fiscal policy. And uh, between all these factions, they're all warring over who controls money. Within the United States, we have the government, the Treasury versus the Fed, and they're also battling. So let's, let's go ahead and um, frame this up, and I'll show you what I think is happening, what I'm doing about it. Okay, so you have to understand that they have opposing agendas. They want two different things. So what do they want? Well, the Fed wants a stronger dollar. They want to control the dollar. They don't want the dollar to become weak. They don't want the dollar to become worthless. They don't want all the nations of the world to dump the dollar. The Fed wants to control the dollar, right? There are pretty much a private institution, semi-private institution run by the bankers, kind of Jamie Dimon, the New York Fed, the top bank in the Fed banking system, of course, Jerome Powell. They don't wanna lose the grip of the dollar that it has on the world. So they want the dollar to be strong, which is why they're raising rates, shrinking the balance sheets. And when they started doing that, it sent the dollar stronger, got so much stronger over the currency. The problem is the, the government, the US government, the treasury, they want more money. Every politician has to promise more social spending. 
because, because where we're at, every single person running for office has to promise more than the one before. So we spend more and more and more, our debt ceiling's going up, we want more money for the you know, military industrial complex, more money to fight all these imaginary wars, all these things. And so the treasury wants more money, but the Fed wants less money because they want the dollar to be stronger. They're at odds more spending and weaker dollar. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, the big picture. Let's dig into this a little bit. So the government problems. Now I've been talking about this for a while that of course you already know this, the government spending is going up. The, the, the US debt clock continues ticking. We're adding debt faster than at any point in history, just continuing to go up and we wanna to continue to spend more. Right now, at the time that we're recording this, the government's back into this um, debt limit ceiling again and we're, you know, the government could default if we don't raise the debt ceiling. We constantly have to be spending more money. But the problem is they want to add this new, you know, 1.7 trillion spending. They want to give all this money to Ukraine. They want to give assistance to all types of people, UBI, et cetera. But as they want to spend more money, the problem is the government's income is going down. So you remember the government and the Federal Reserve are separate. So the government's income is going down. Now this is something I've been talking about for quite a bit. Now I did a video here. This was uh, five months ago. Uh, this is why inflation has not peaked. And so we'll link it here, or better, it's in the description down below, watch it after this one. But in this video, I went through great detail explaining, again, this was five months ago, explaining that we were gonna end up in this situation right now. Because of what the Federal Reserve was doing by raising rates and restricting money, it was going to crush the market, it was gonna bring asset prices down. When asset prices come down, then the federal government has less tax receipts, they make less money. And so it's gonna cause a big problem. And I broke it all down in this video, so I'd highly recommend watching it after this if you wanna know more. Here's one chart that I can show you. And so what this shows us is that when asset prices come down, tax receipts come down. So when asset prices are high, when homes are high, when stocks are high, things like that, and you sell stocks or you sell your home or you sell whatever asset that is, you pay taxes on that. Also, when your stock accounts, your retirement accounts, your home is worth a lot of money, you feel rich, so you spend a lot of money. So that causes tax receipts to go up. But when asset prices come down, tax receipts also plunge to the ground. So I, I talked about this five months ago, and here we are. We're dealing this with right now. So just to give you kind of an example, I also use this chart in the video. You can see that this is all taxpayers. We have uh, the top 5% of income earners right here pay 60% of the income tax. The top 5% of income earners in the United States pay 60% of the tax. Now, the top 5% don't earn W-2 income. Their taxes aren't deducted at their paycheck. They're getting, most of their money is coming through stocks, stock dividends, um, and assets. And so when those assets plunge, 60% of the taxpayers don't have any money. Now I also ran, uh, I did another video right here, this was four months ago, and in this video, this could cause the Fed to go bust. We'll link it here, or better yet, we'll put it in the description down below if you wanna watch this video. But in this, I explained how the Federal Reserve, as they were raising rates, caused two problems. One, it caused them to have less income, but also because rates went higher, they have to pay out more interest. And so again, they got caught in the same problem where they were bringing in less income and paying out more. And as a matter of fact, I said they could go bust or they could go bankrupt because of this. Now in this video, I broke down all the math. So if you wanna watch it, go back and watch this from four months ago. But the big takeaway here is that the Federal Reserve takes all that money, they printed it from thin air, they get money from interest, and they give that to the Treasury. But when the Fed went bust, when they went insolvent, they don't have any money to give to the Treasury. So the Treasury, the government, has been used to getting this money and now they don't have any more. Here's a slide from the video. And we can see after earnings, 100 billion in 2021, the Fed is now primed to lose 239 billion. So the Fed is losing money. So that's a swing of 347 billion and that's from going to a 4% interest rate. Now we're pushing 5%, which means it's gonna be an even bigger loss. And again, the problem with that 343 billion is that that was supposed to go to the government, to the treasury, so they don't have that money. So they're spending more money and their income is going down at the same time. That's a big problem. Now, the problem, it's here, it's at our doorstep. And uh, like I said, I made these videos five months ago, but now we're witnessing it. Now this is uh, what I'm calling Powell's Paradox. 
All right. So Powell's paradox is that the Fed is trying to fight inflation, right? Prices have gone too high. They have to crush the markets to bring down inflation. But the problem is, as they're fighting inflation, as they're crushing markets to do that, they're also forcing the U.S. Treasury to become insolvent. <laughs> So they're trying to crush the markets, but they're also crushing the treasury. It's sort of like if you had cancer and you got chemotherapy. Chemotherapy basically kills your whole body and it hopefully kills the cancer before it kills you. And I think that's sort of similar here where the Fed is trying to crush all the markets, crush demand, trying to kill inflation, and they're hoping that the U.S. government doesn't go bust at the meantime. Now this is an updated chart. I use this in my video from five months ago. Here's an updated chart. But this basically shows what is called the true interest expense, which is basically the U.S. tax receipts and it's treasury spending plus entitlements plus pay as you go. So these are entitlements. This is the money that has to be spent by the government. And what this is showing us is a percentage of the tax receipts. So the mandatory spending as a percentage of the income. So for example, let's say that's like your house payment and your car payment and your insurance. So what percentage, that's like mandatory. If you don't pay that, you get kicked out of your house or your car gets repoed. So what percentage of those mandatory expenses go into your total income? And that's kind of what we're looking at right here. And so what we can see is that back here in 2016, it was about 70% of the money the treasury, the government received, they were required to spend. But what happened is, as we can see right here in 2020, it became almost 120%, meaning they were spending way more than they were bringing in. Now we saw it start dropping back down um, in 2021 because we had this everything bubble. Because inflation went up so high, it caused lots of tax receipts which brought it back down into this 80% level. But the problem is, is now asset prices are going down and it's pushed this back up and we are pushing almost 120% again. That is not good. So what are we gonna do about that? Well, the treasury is going broke, that's a big deal. And as a matter of fact, just like I told you five months ago, if you're watching my videos, you're ahead of this, but here we have treasury announces borrowing estimates. Now this came out January 30th, so it was a couple weeks ago. The U.S. Department of Treasury today announced it's borrowing for the January to March 2023. So this is quarter one of 2023. So we're in that right now. So what, what are they borrowing? During this first quarter, the Treasury expects to borrow a trillion dollars. 932 billion. 932 billion, basically a trillion dollars they have to borrow just this quarter to stay afloat. Now again, if you've been watching my videos, I told you five months ago this was gonna happen, and yet here it is. It's a big deal. So that's the battle. We've seen it coming. It's like this train wreck happening and here it is. It's on our doorstep. And so now we have the US government, the treasury versus the Federal Reserve. This is the battle. Now, of course, we have Jerome Powell over here on the left and he is sticking to it, right? He's sticking to it until the job is done. He's sticking to his plan of raising rates and tightening monetary policy until inflation comes down. The problem is, like I said, that puts the Treasury out of business. And so Janet Yellen has something else up her sleeve. As a matter of fact, we can see here in this article all the way back in October of last year that Yellen was already starting to worry of a loss of adequate liquidity. So this is back in October, back when I was even, I made those videos was uh, August and September. So this is afterwards, she's saying, hey, like we're gonna go broke. We don't have enough liquidity, okay? We saw that in October. That was October 12th. Now, what happened about a week later, this was uh, October, um, right, right around the same time, Janet Yellen is taking steps to enhance. Enhance what? Enhance treasury market and boost the fund's resilience. Now, I love this part right here. U.S. Treasury is taking steps to strengthen, to strengthen the markets, because it was running out of liquidity, because they were going broke. Taking steps to strengthen, but, it says, but, the U.S. system is functioning well despite elevated global volatility. So um, it's working well, but, but we are taking steps to strengthen it. <laughs> if it's working so well, why are they going to take steps to, uh, steps to strengthen it? And so we saw in October, it became a problem. She started enhancing it, taking steps. Now take a look at this. Remember, what does Jerome Powell want? A strong dollar. What does Yellen want? A weak dollar. Here we have right here, October of 2022, and this is the dollar index as measured on the Dixie, and look at the strength of the dollar. So who's winning? Jerome Powell was pushing it up, and Janet Yellen starts to push it down. 
who's winning. Well, you can see who's winning the game of tug of war. Now, it doesn't stop there. As a matter of fact, Janet Yellen is continuing on. It says right here, Janet Yellen reports new debt limit accounting maneuver. I love this, right? It's all about magic tricks. It's how, how, how can they creatively change accounting rules? How can they maneuver? The Treasury is going to alter investments now. So this is January 24th. So because this debt problem is getting out of control, the Treasury is going broke, the government's going broke, they won't raise the debt ceiling, potentially the US government could default on its debt. And so she has an idea. We can just mess around with the accounting and we can maneuver, we can outmaneuver, which of course part of that outmaneuvering is that they well, just won't fund retirement accounts. We'll pay it back later. We'll raid your retirement account. Hopefully you don't need it and hopefully we'll be able to pay that money back, pay your piggy bank back before you need it. Now on top of that, they're also changing the way CPI is calculated. Now I made a video about this and I talked about how they're going to change the comp from two years to one year. We'll link it in the description down below. This is the video that set off a firestorm that caused all of these comments and questions and confusion, which is why I'm having a live event. We're going to talk about it. Again, there's a link down below for this live event if you want to come hang out and ask questions. But they're, they're changing the CPI calculation. There's two different ways they've done it. One is by changing the comp, but the second is by changing the weighting of the baskets. And so if inflation's too high as measured by the CPI, well, let's just change the way we calculate it and we'll get that back down. Now, this isn't done by the Fed. This is done by the government. So then the government who's fighting the Fed could say, hey, Fed, we don't know what you're doing, man. Look, CPI is low. American people, look, CPI is low. It's the Fed. They're working against you. They're trying to build the sentiment. You can see how that's all starting to happen. Okay, so the fight. Here's really the fight. Who's going to be the fall guy? Is Jerome Powell going to fall, be the fall guy or is it going to be Janet Yellen? Now, Jerome Powell, you heard a lot of talk about since inflation was this high and Paul Volcker and Paul Volcker stepped in and he crushed inflation and Jerome Powell wants to be Volcker. But he doesn't want to be Arthur Burns who tried to fight inflation and couldn't beat it and inflation came raging back even worse. And Arthur Burns went down in history as a failure while Paul Volcker went down in history as a success. So where does Powell want to be? Does he want to go down in history and be a laughing stock or does he want to crush inflation? Does he want to be an Arthur Burns, a laughing stock or does he want to be like Volcker? Well, Janet Yellen, <laughs> she's on the other side. She's in charge of the U.S. fiscal crisis. Does she want to be in charge of the first U.S. fiscal crisis? Does she want to be in, in, involved, the Treasury Secretary, the first one to default on U.S. debt? Of course not. So the, neither one of them want to go down in the history books as failures, but yet at the same time, they're at odds. So if that's the fight, the question is then, who's going to win? Who's going to win? Well, what I would say is, one, I don't have a crystal ball, but here's the way I'm looking at it. One. Janet Yellen has the upper hand. I mean, it's the government. Uh, sure, tr the, the Fed is a semi-private you know, private institution, but the government still has the power at the end of the day. Um, Powell, I think, you know, in order for him to win, the government has to default. And I just don't see that as a possibility. I mean, I see it as a, a very small possibility. It's, it's, it's probable, but very small. And that's why I think Yellen has the upper hand. The government has way too many tricks up their sleeve. They can just print their own money. You've heard them talking about a trillion dollar coin. They can just print their own money if the Fed won't go along with it. So the government has many, many more tricks up their sleeve. And at the, at the end of the day, Powell does not want to see the government default. I think there's about a 0% chance of that happening. No government that can print money would ever go default. Um, and so what am I going to do about it? What can we do about this? Well, because we are uncertainty, there's no clear certainty. And in, in life, there's no such thing as certainties. There's only probabilities. So what is the percentage chance that Powell wins? What's the percentage chance that Yellen wins? And what happens to us and our investments in the middle? So what, I, what I'm doing and what I kind of recommend is this barbell approach. Barbell approach would be like if you had weights on each side and you had that so instead of being evenly weighted like this, no, 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 you basically just have on each side and you're kind of heavy. And so on one side of the barbell, I'm heavy cash. 
Now, I know a lot of you are worried about bank balance. I've done videos about that. And so I've been putting my cash, you can put it into CDs and earn for over 4%, money markets, US treasuries. And so you can be pretty safe in US treasuries. You're not keeping up with inflation, but you're doing pretty good. So heavy cash on one side. And on the other side, I like my inflation sensitive um, assets on the other side, heavy commodities, heavy energy, Yes, Bitcoin, I know some of you don't like it, gold, gold miners, and things like that. On one side, cash on the other, that's my plan. Now, uh, what's yours? Do you have a plan? Are you paying attention? Are you watching the signs? I've been talking about this for five months. If you just tune in every week, at least you'll be caught up. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna come hang out with me, next week we're gonna go live for an hour. I'm gonna break all this down, show you what I'm doing, and of course, answer all your questions live. It's always a good time. There's a link down below if you wanna come join me. Other than that, that's what I got. I'm reporting it to you in play by play, and we'll stay on top of this. And so make sure you're subscribed to this channel. As always, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. If you don't, you can give me a thumbs down, that's okay, but at least tell me why in the comments. And that's what I got, to your success. I'm out.